Okay, for all you small business owners out there or people who are on a little bit of a constrained budget when it comes to influencer marketing, I've got something for you. You should be connecting with micro and nano influencers. They can help promote your products or services on social media. You need to look no further now than reach influencers. It is a cost-effective, easy-to-use influencer marketing software solution for as little as $100 a month, Reach Influencers will help you find, engage, and pay online creators in a one-stop shop system. They've got a special URL just for you. Go to CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. You can get signed up and start connecting today. All that fancy software at a price point that's good for your business. That's Reach Influencers. You can find them at CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. On this episode of Winfluence. When you realize an influencer is just someone who influences your audience, it opens up the realm of possibility for how you create your influence marketing plans and who you tap as influencers. For example, how are you leveraging your CSR partners and PR experts? There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. You know, I share a lot of my own opinions about influence marketing here on the show, but of course, the meat of what we do here is mind the brilliant minds of our guests. I make no claim to be the know-all and end-all to influence marketing. Sure, I have a perspective on the practice and industry that I think is unique and expands your thinking about it. I believe that's why you listen, and I thank you for that. But some of the people I share ideas with behind the scenes are awfully smart, and I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't elevate those voices and perspectives as well. Sarah Panouse is steep in experience working with big brands and influence marketing. She's worked with Sleep Number, Starbucks, Nestle, among others. Her experience led her to develop her own categorizations of influencers and a smart way of thinking about and executing influence marketing campaigns. Sarah also happens to be the host of a mighty fine podcast called Marketing with Empathy. It's one of our sister shows on the Marketing Podcast Network. As one might assume from the title, Marketing with Empathy is about far more than influence marketing. But because influencers are top of mind for brand managers that listen to her, and because approaching them with empathy is just plain smart, the topic pops up on the show from time to time. Sarah recently did a series of episodes about her six categories of influencers. These are stakeholders or pools of people one might turn to for an influence marketing campaign. So celebrities would be one, current customers is another, and so on. Today on Winfluence, I'm going to share an excerpt from her episode on CSR and PR contacts that can serve as influence conduits for your brand. That's right. Tapping into corporate social responsibility and media and public relations relationships to further your influence campaigns. Sarah will certainly give you more to chew on about how to think of it as influence marketing rather than influencer marketing on today's show. More from Sarah Panouse in a moment. As always, we have to thank our presenting sponsor, Tagger. I had a recent experience with Tagger that just underlines why I love using the software so much. We had a, an influencer come into Lexington, Kentucky to spend the weekend there. The CVB Visit Lex is a longtime Cornette client. We had set the creator up in a tagger campaign and gave him instructions on what hashtags to use to tag Visit Lex in his posts and so on and so forth. Well, he came to Lexington and had a wonderful time, as most people do who visit Lexington, Kentucky. And at the end of the weekend, I actually fired off very quickly on Monday morning. I fired off a report from Tagger that was sort of a complete look at all of the content that he had posted from that weekend. It was over 60 Instagram stories and posts, hundreds of thousands of impressions, and the potential reach of this one influencer was almost a million people. Now, obviously, it wasn't a million different people because 
He has, I think, I don't know, 30 or 40,000 people in his audience that he was posting these to all weekend. But at the same time, I was able to easily and quickly quantify success of this one particular creator in Tagger. I could add multiple creators to that campaign and summarize the whole thing, which we're going to do because we've got a few more coming in over the next few weeks. So I just hit a button. I made sure my date range was right. And boom, I've got a PDF report to share with the client. I could go on and on about Tagger and and how much I love using it, but you know I do. You know I love it. You know I use it. I think you should check it out too. It may just be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash Tagger to get a free demo and see if Tagger is right for you. That URL again, jason.online slash Tagger. And you may have heard me talking about LinkedIn before the show or maybe during the breaks lately. That's because LinkedIn has partnered with me to offer you a $100 advertising credit to get your message in front of the right kind of decision makers. Now, I use LinkedIn advertising to target leads based on job description, company, seniority, industry, and all kinds of other demographic makeup. That means I'm not wasting advertising spend getting my message in front of people who aren't my ideal customer. And you can do that too. LinkedIn is offering you, listeners of Winfluence, you, you get $100 in ad credits just because you listen to this show. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence today. That's right, linkedin.com slash Winfluence. 100 bucks in free ad credits. Sign me up. linkedin.com slash Winfluence. How can you leverage corporate social responsibility and public relations contacts to expand your practice of influence marketing? I'll share an excerpt from Marketing with Empathy, the powerful podcast from Sarah Panouse, next on Winfluence. Support for Winfluence and all the shows in the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Storyblock. Think of your content management system. Now think of it being able to update the other 5, 10, or even 20 places you need those prices or product descriptions changed. Update content once, publish it everywhere. Sign up for a free account to see how simple content management can be. Go to storyblock.com slash Winfluence. That's storyblock without the C dot com slash Winfluence. As promised, here's a bit of a recent episode of Marketing with Empathy from Sarah Panouse. Sit back and hear her wisdom about leveraging CSR and PR channels to expand your efforts to influence. Take it away, Sarah. Hey, hey, kindred speakers. Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing with Empathy podcast. I'm so thankful that you are here. And if this is your first time, welcome to the show. So today I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to continue a conversation I've been having on the show regarding influence marketing plans. And based on my experience leading influencer marketing programs for very large brands throughout my career the last 20 years, I've outlined like six categories of influencers that brands can leverage. Every category is not right for every brand. Um, It really just depends. But I want to help expand the thinking around influence marketing because I think a lot of people think of influencers and they think of one thing. Usually they'll think of social influencers or celebrities. um, And influencers is so much more than that. So I've already spoken about social creators and your customers, two of my categories of influence marketers. And the third category I define is what I call A-listers and celebrities. So that's the third. And the final two categories that I'm going to discuss today are what I call CSR amplifiers and PRable experts. So as I've shared before in the show, my first experience with influencer marketing was earlier in my career when I worked on the agency side, um, helping develop influencer capabilities at an agency that I worked at in Boston back in like the early 2000s. And at that time, influencer marketing was a relatively new term that marketing teams were considering and talking about. And I remember working on this huge influencer program for a major bottled water company to support the launch of a new health water that talked targeted women. And we first wanted to tap into influencers as a thought leadership group to give us feedback on the product. And then if they liked it, tap into them to help spread awareness around the new health water with their communities. And it was a very large mass influencer approach um, where we literally found thousands of 
influencers who shared their feedback with us on the product with the brand and then notified us of like collaboration opportunities, like sponsoring large events that we wouldn't have like known about otherwise. Um, some became PR spokespeople for us, others, you know, to answer reporter questions about like the health aspects of the product. And then that first group referred us to others. And then the program grew into tens of thousands of influencers across the country that had influence in their network in the health and wellness space. And to this day, that definitely remains the largest organized influencer program that I've personally worked on. And, you know, later in my career, it really um, changed. And most of my experience lately has been around much smaller programs um, revolving around like focusing on a handful of influencers, like handpicked to build really meaningful, long-term, bigger scale um, relationships with and activations with them, you know, throughout the f- of course of a full year. And then I've also spent a lot of time tapping into brands, existing customer loyalty programs to drive engagement, advocacy, and referrals, you know, across all of your existing customer base. Because as I talk about in a previous podcast episode, customers, are a huge influence um, for your brand, your customers, your existing folks are the ones that are referring and repeat buying and donating their time or services, et cetera, to your brand. And so I love working with like the customer side of it and thinking about how your storytelling content can engage them, how you can include them in your storytelling content as well. It's like a beautiful cycle. So neither approach is better than the other. It just really all depends what you're trying to approach. And as I shared way back on episode seven, an influencer is anyone who influences your audience. It can be anyone. I'm going to repeat it again. An influencer is anyone who influences your audience. That's the definition of influence marketing. I talk about it with Jason Falls in a previous, in his book, Winfluence, um, on a previous episode. So, you know, for example, it can be the mom next door, your employee, a social influencer, a celebrity, the CEO of an organization, owners of your product, your customers, like I just talked about, any group of people that your audience listens to is inspired by and trust. That's an influencer by definition. So when a brand asks me if influencer marketing is right for them, I will always say yes, because I think influencer marketing is right for every single brand, because aren't we all trying to influence our audience? It just really depends what kind of influencers are right for your brand, um, because not all types of influencers are right for every brand. So, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again that influencers are 100% right for your brand as long as you're focusing on influencers who actually influence your audience. So that's why I believe influencer marketing is always going to be important for brands. And I just don't see a day when companies are stopped trying to spread word of mouth about how great they are and what they can do and, you know, why you should purchase them and invest in them. So, After this quick commercial break, I'm going to dig into the final two categories of influencers as I define them, which are CSR amplifiers and PRable experts. So stick around. Hey, gang, LinkedIn is number one in B2B display advertising in the U.S., and using LinkedIn advertising gives you a great advantage. You can stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. LinkedIn's targeting tools allow you to reach your precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means your ads are being seen by those who matter. Scale your marketing, grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than the competition, and just for listening. Listening to Winfluence, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. Just for you to claim that credit. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A hundred bucks in free ads? I'm down. So CSR amplifiers is what we're going to start with first. So CSR stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. This is your the causes that your company cares about, donates to, fundraises for, you know, volunteers toward. CSR amplifiers are partners, um, you know, outside of your organization that you can tap into, but there's teams internally inside of your organization as well, depending on how your team is structured. So, for example, when you're thinking about CSR partners, 
who is the president or who's on the board of directors at the cause you support? Who's your main person over there? Who's their main spokesperson? Is there a way you can leverage and tap into that person, those people who have influence? How can you partner with them to amplify your brand messages with their audience? You know, a lot of times when you're doing um, CSR work, as it should, you are focused on supporting that cause. But I think a lot of times brands think of just like the one way communication conversation part of it, which is like the brand helping the nonprofit um, or the cause. But it goes both ways because that cause, that nonprofit, that organization and entity that you're supporting also has its whole, whole ecosystem of people and networks as well that you can tap into. So, This could be, you know, emails that they send out to their database, uh, a newsletter that they have. Maybe they have an online portal that they share content with their other partners through that you could become a part of, um, helping spread word of mouth about your products by offering them to the employees of the cause to create advocacy and future customers through their own employee base. Um, It also involves like truly treating this CSR partner like as a member of your team versus thinking of them as like something just off to the side that your company does. And what I mean by that is I want you to think about the resources that this um, CSR company has. You know, like I said, who are their experts What are their communication channels? Do they have that you can co-share your messaging and your company's storytelling through? And how do you build that as part of your influence marketing plan to say, we're going to tap into and expand because they have amazing um, influence with their network or they have amazing influence in this area or with this other, a lot of times, another nonprofit or another group or another board or things that you can tap in through. So as a brand, you're spreading awareness about this CSR cause, but how can the CSR brand also spread awareness about your brand? Um, That's what I mean when I talk about CSR amplifiers. Don't leave it as a one-sided conversation or think of it as an offshoot. There's influence marketing potential here that you don't want to ignore. They have huge influence with their audience of supporters, and they also can open up a lot of doors and a lot of conversations with very other influential people that maybe would not have been as open to speaking with your brand before. So if your company has a CSR initiative, add it to your influence marketing plans this year and think about it and talk with the team that manages that partnership to how you can fold them into your influence marketing plans. Okay. And then the the next category, my final category, I call PRable experts, PRs in public relations. So what are PRable experts? Well, I call them this because these are people your PR team could pitch to the media and the media would want to interview them or get quotes from them for like an earned story. As I've learned in my career, not every influencer is pitchable to the media. The media usually, in my experience, does not want to speak with social influencers. A, um, they're just not credible enough um, or have the background that they want to quote in a story. A big YouTube influencer isn't necessarily going to be the right credible source, right, that your your local TV news station is going to be interested in or a big national magazine and their online publication is looking for. The influence filter you want to ask yourself here is um, kind of like three things. One you want to ask yourself if this is right for you is, do we want earned media coverage to expand this message or this initiative? Because if you do, then PR should be part of your plan. Two, then what topic is this expert influential in? And does that align with what our brand is trying to talk about? That will help you find out, um, you know, the right person. And then three, is this person someone our PR team can pitch and secure interviews with? And ask your PR team. Don't assume. Ask them. (laughs) They will have an opinion based on their experience. If you're not on the PR team, Um, just because there's nothing worse than someone be like, oh, yeah, the PR team can just pitch this out. And it's not like you're like when you're on the PR team, you're like, this is not happening. Like nobody's interested in this. Um, that has happened. But generally, from my experience, PR able experts tend to be um, doctors, leaders, um, people who are doing research, like the background, back end founders of certain things, right? Like you, there's a different angle with the media that will get them interested um, in wanting to speak with them. And so that is another angle that you can think about because then you think, 
uh, earned media coverage is hu- hugely valuable in terms of others who can read a story and hear the expertise that's being shared from your brand through your spokesperson, you know, who is speaking on behalf or speaking about the work that your company is doing, but in a, in an editorialized way, um, there is, you know, influence and reach there in terms of um, the others, anyone who's chiming in and wanting to read those publications or watch that video. So that's it. Like that's, that's it for today's episode, super short and sweet, but I wanted just to give you my final two categories. And I hope that this really helps expand your thoughts around these two additional categories that you can add to your influence marketing plans this year. So CSR amplifiers and PRable experts. I'll see you back here next week, everyone. Until next time, kindred speakers. If you loved hearing Sarah's perspective on influencers, you'll probably very much enjoy listening to Marketing with Empathy regularly. Go subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app by searching for Marketing with Empathy. You can also visit Sarah's website at kindredspeak.com. That's kindredspeak.com. And of course, you can hit up marketingpodcasts.net to find Sarah's show along with 30 other marketing podcasts to make you a smarter marketer. As for this show, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled interviews with smart people next week. I just knew Sarah's wisdom and additional perspective would be one that you would appreciate today. But don't forget to drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them. Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Podchaser, TuneIt, Good Pods, Listen Notes, Audible, Pandora, Amazon Music. If we are not where you listen, let me know, and I will correct that as soon as possible. Whatever your app or listening mode, if you're listening to us right now, and don't let this shock you, you are. Look for the stars or ratings on that app or site and tap or click and let us know how we're doing. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks and go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. I'm working on the next one now, so do go sign up, jason.online slash subscribe. Get on that list. And I'd love for you to help make a future episode of Influence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on the phone and email it to me, and I will let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Regardless of how you ask it, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence, the book, as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hey there. We have got another fantastic marketing podcast for you, if I do say so myself. (laughs) I'm Carrie Barrett. I'm the host of the VIQ podcast. VIQ stands for Video IQ. And in each episode, I teach you how to create standout DIY video. I'm talking about turning your phone into a money-making machine. And this is for all parts of your funnel, social right at the top, all the way down through live streaming at the bottom. And just like this podcast, 